He wants to make it a family year. Like we, we've got a good squad. He wants everyone to be tight and close together. But as a coach as well, he's he's another level, um, and he's brought in great staff with him as well that help him massively. On those long meetings as well, obviously, if Villa get through the playoff round of the Conference League, which we'll hope for, they will, and go deep in the competition. There's a lot of Thursday to Sunday games. Yeah. That's a lot more meetings as well. Yeah, I think we'll have to find some comfier chairs in the meeting room. <laughs> Sixth most tackles, seventh most tackles won, seventh most blocks. So it's most crosses. You work for Sky, you. <laughs> <laughs> and what's Unaimri like around Bodymore, around the training ground? Does he does he go home at any point? <laughs> <coughs> like nine o'clock at night, I think he goes home. <laughs> nah, he, he's like a work, he's a workaholic. The only thing that matters is the next game. Like you could have a good World Cup, play well, come back, play good, and then you have like three bad games in a row, and everyone hates you. Hello and welcome back to the Claren Blue podcast. Today we have the privilege of being joined by Aston Villa's Matty Cash. Firstly, Matty, how are you and how was your summer? Yeah, really good. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, nah, nah, it's um, been a really good break to be honest, yeah. Um, it went quite quickly, I think six weeks, but it felt like two. Um, but nah, it's always nice to be back, back in, um, back at Bodymore, back seeing everyone and stuff, so it's good to be here. I was going to mention that because it feels like two weeks ago that Villa played yeah. Brighton. I know, yeah. So in the off season, I presume you kept yourself ticking over, even though it's just like it's gone really quickly. Yeah, yeah, I've done like a little bit. I think the first two weeks you always have off. Um, obviously, we finished the season really good as well, which was a positive. Um, to be honest, we probably wanted to carry on going because we finished it that good. So now nah, it was nice, just two weeks off, and then um, had four week build up of just doing a bit of bit of prep, going away on holiday and stuff, doing a bit of training in the sun. Um, and it's been quite tough since we've been back, so it's been good though. Yeah. yeah. If I cast your mind back to when you know when we first took over in November, what were the key things that he, I suppose, changed straight away, or was there anything that you weren't privy to under previous managers in your career that you thought, oh wow, that's different, or this is going to you know, change my career potentially right from the very start, and that got buy-in from the players? Yeah, right I think a lot's changed to be honest. Um, I think no, obviously, no disrespect to previous managers, everyone's got their own identity, but. Um, the manager's come in, he's been really good, yeah. Um, set set it straight out of how he wants us to play, uh, what targets he wants us to achieve. Um, and I think that the main the main target last year was to get into Europe, which we ended up doing. So I think that was, the, as I said, the main target. So that was good. Um, but but as a coach as well, he's, he's another level. Um, and he's brought in great staff with him as well that help him massively. For example, we've got like set piece coaches, obviously Austin, he was here already. We've got like um, fullback coaches. Um, that do loads of work with the fullbacks. We've got strikers. It's all like, it's got another level, you know? So That's um, interesting about the fullback coach. So yeah, yeah. Is that something that you've had in your career before? Nah, never, nah. Nah, I never had stuff like that. So to to be working with, with, with um, it's sort of two coaches we've got that do the fullbacks and defensive side. Um, and, and in a short space of time already, the improvement that, that we've seen is, is really good. This little detail, so yeah. hopefully that can continue. Um, and keep progressing because that's what he does to players. He makes them better. So. Yeah, in the Warsaw game, when I know there was a delay by 15 minutes, but when the Warsaw players come out to kick off, I think Pablo Villanueva was doing set pieces and crossing. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought it, that is every detail in the first game of pre season. Yeah. Warsaw yeah. already, but. We'll to be continue. fair, it was mainly because we were late, I it think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were late because there was a bit of traffic, so um, we didn't actually have time to go over set pieces. We'd done a little bit in the training like crossing, the day before. Yeah. yeah, so I think if we were on time, we, we wouldn't have been doing that. It would have been more in the changing room and set out. Um, but it, that, that is an example that you don't miss anything, you know? So um, that's the sort of coaches and level that we're working with now. Yeah. Um, not just messages on the pitch, but in terms of Uno, I think he wants to bring that sort of family feel to the club yeah, as well. Yeah. And, he wants to get to know players beyond the pitch as well, yeah. you know, too, as you had like one-on-one -on -one meetings with you to get to know you better and that sort of stuff. Uh, a few, like when he first came in, he had a few one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, I mean, the day before games, normally when we travel, last season we'd he'd call maybe uh, players in one-to-one -one and talk about the games and talk about what he wants from you um, and talk about the next, the, like say for example, on the Friday we're in the hotel, what he wants us for us on the Saturday sort of thing. So we've had a few one-to-ones, but it's mainly in groups, really. We have quite quite a lot of meetings in terms of in a group um, on, on, on looking at possession, uh, looking at the opposition. Um, and, and yeah, he wants to make it a family year. Like we, we've got a good squad. He wants everyone to be tight and close together. Um, and I think that's how you become better, really. I think if you're a good team and, you, and you, you're close together and you know each other well, I think you want to work for each other. So that's the feel he's trying to bring. 
And on, the, on those long meetings as well, obviously, if Villa get through the playoff round of the Conference League, which we'll hope for the will, and go deep in the competition, there's a lot of Thursday to Sunday games. Yeah. That's a lot more meetings as well. Yeah, but yeah. I, I suppose for players like yourself, you've got such an appetite to improve. Yeah, you know, That's going to be only beneficial for your career, even though it's extra work. At body yeah, now. I think we'll have to find some comfier chairs in the meeting room. <laughs> Definitely will be, uh, if exactly, if we play Thursdays or when we play Thursday, Sunday, it's going to be a lot of meetings. But, at the end of the day, we're improving from it, and and I think especially last year since he come in, you can see the improvement in players and in and as a team really. Um, like the style that we we created last year was fantastic, and it was only over a short space of time. So now, I think the level is going to crank up. Obviously, we've made um, some new additions that were welcome and well, fantastic players. So they're going to knock the level level up again, um, and we want to we want to keep progressing and, and doing really well. Yeah, so. But I suppose on on an outgoing in Ashley Young last uh, or in the summer, sorry, how important was he for you in terms of your development, not just only as a player but as a professional as well? Because he's won almost everything. He was obviously at the club previously, came back a year after you joined Villa. So how how important was he? Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of Ash. I think it speaks him. So he, he speaks for himself with the career he's had. You know, at thirty eight years of thirty eight years years of age, um, the way he moves and at, at what he what he brings to the team. Um, is fantastic and and you could see that in his performances he was fantastic um and and there's there's no surprises that he's still playing premier league football cuz exactly he's a winner and he wants to play at the highest level possible so he was massive for me yeah we had a good good really good relationship on and off the pitch um and and yeah obviously it's sad to see him go but I wish him all the best yeah yeah and last season when you weren't playing or you had a couple of injury niggles as well did you still feel part of it because there was that you know that big push for European football, mm. and again that Emery influence in terms of making that family feel. It was a big combined effort as well. Um, so how was that? Even you know it was five or six, maybe seven games after yeah. an injury as well during that ten match and beat and run. But you must have still feel. Yeah, yeah. I think like uh, we're obviously everyone's part of the squad, you know. So whether you're playing or not, I think it's important to feel part of it because at the end of the day we're a team. So we win together, we lose together. But obviously the the guys that were playing were winning every game. So it was it was fantastic to see. Um, and then on a player, obviously on a player point of view, you want to play every game. Um, you want to be involved with, with on the pitch. Not you don't really. Want, you obviously you want to be involved off it, but you the main main priority is to play. You know, um, and obviously I picked up a few injuries, and in that's football. You can't help that. So last year I had a few little niggles. I think the season before I, I played obviously every game, and I might have just had a little bit of a, a, a maybe a little bit of fatigue. You know, I'm not too sure. But this year I feel really good. So. Um, Making myself, making myself um, stronger and fitter, and hopefully this year I'll be injury free. Yeah. And you obviously came back for the last three games, though three crucial games: Tottenham, Liverpool. Started the Liverpool and Brighton games. Mm. Were you paying for it at that point? Were you on injections or anything? Just because it was the last push for the. No, no, I, was, I had, I was on. I had loads of tablets. Had an injection for the Liverpool game, so yeah, I wanted to be out there. Um, so yeah, I just had a few little. Obviously, I had the niggle, and then I had a few. Obviously, because I didn't have a lot of training time, I just wanted to make sure I was playing, so I was doing everything. Were you pain free in those games? Uh, yeah, I was pain free, but not like fully. If I didn't have like painkillers and that, I probably would have felt something still. Um, yeah, I remember my hamstring was proper. It was playing up, but now I feel good now. So that's part of footy. I, like it's part of footy, and it getting injured and stuff. So um, now, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling good. So. Because you mentioned the season before last, 38 starts, you missed about 40 minutes, 50 minutes yeah, I know, yeah. across the season. And you're posting really good stats then as well. Yeah. Of all Premier League players, sixth most tackles, seventh most tackles won, seventh most blocks, seventh most crosses. You work for Sky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that proves that you can get to those levels in next yeah, season yeah. again for the next four weeks. Definitely. I think, to be honest, I think even last year when I played, I played, all right. like, I played well, I thought. Like, I wasn't disappointed oh, of course, yeah. with my performances last year. It was just more on the fact that like, I got injured, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's frustrating. Um, but obviously, the season before, the numbers, because I was playing consistent football, is what you get. So this year, my main priority and my main aim is to do that, um, is to get them numbers up again, get consistent football. Um, and as I said, I've, I've come in, I've worked hard over the off-season, and I feel good. So fingers crossed we can do it in Europe as well. Yeah, because <laughs> the next four weeks is not just taking on manager messages, it's getting to the base of fitness where you're confident in your own body to yeah, yeah. have another season like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like Football is such a mind game as well. Like Especially when you pick up a few little injuries and stuff, you just think to yourself, like, am I going to like get injured again? Because I actually had a little hammy and then I'd done my quad. And then, no, it was my calf. The calf was like the pitch though, I think. International duty. Was yeah, it was like the pitch was like, the pitches were different over abroad where we played. 
and it just messed with my calf a little bit because I had a bit of fatigue. Um, but yeah, it just fit like when you like I'm not used to getting injured, so like when you pick up a few injuries, you think, oh, I hope this don't like keep happening. Um, but as I said, now I've I've made sure I've I've done everything to make sure I'm good. Yeah. So yeah. And what's Unaimri like around Bodymore, around the training ground? Does he does he go home at any point? <laughs> <coughs> like nine o'clock at night, I think he goes home. <laughs> nah, he, he's like a work, he's a workaholic. He 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 works continuously. I don't exactly know what time he goes home, but um, I think yeah, for a manager of of his stature and what he's achieved in the game, um, I think for him the only way is to work, work, work to progress. And as you can see, like what he's done here in a short space of time, like I think his last. Like his st- I was reading stats before. He's like he's been in European football for like X sixteen amount of years. Think, yeah, sixteen yeah. years. It shows that like he's worked at the top. So um, and he's got a great platform here to to carry on doing it. So yeah, all credit. It's fantastic to work with him and work under him and to to um, yeah to play under him is really good. So. But I think it kind of gets missed sometimes that he couldn't have just taken over any group of players. He needed players like yourself, Ollie Watkins, John McGinn, Tyrone Mings, all players who were really keen to improve and can improve and can get to new levels he needed that group of players as well so I think it's testament to yourself that you want to keep going mm. um, like, yeah we've got a, like we've got a young squad like you look at Dougie he's young like Ollie's still young like I think even 26 27 is still young nowadays in football so I think at 26 27 you look at like Tyrone he was saying in an interview before that like he's never worked under a coach that like this that's like improved him so quickly um, and he's like what 27 Ty? Yeah, like 28, 29, whatever. And like that just shows at that age you can still improve, you know? So, um, and obviously, yeah, there's a lot of young players in the squad. As I said, Dougie's young, me, I'm still 25. So loads of loads of, loads of room to improve. So fingers crossed I do that. And you've come quite a long way in a short space of time. It must have gone like that for you because yeah. you kind of come through the ladder, different academies and forest you come through and Premier League move to Villa. World Cup with your national team, European football with Villa. Mm. Do you kind of pinch yourself sometimes that you're really doing it here right now? Yeah, like I think like when you're in it, you just sort of like go with the flow, you know? Like as a footballer, like you sort of, you come to work every day, you train and, and you don't really, obviously you think about these things. Obviously I've played in the World Cup, it's fantastic, but there's no time to think. Like the, the, like only, the only thing that matters is the next game. Like you could have a good World Cup, play well, come back, play good, and then you have like three bad games in a row and everyone hates you. So that's just football, you know? So... You're only as good as your last game, as they say. So um, that's that's all I think, really. So sometimes I don't. You do think, oh, I've done really well, but like in my own head, I just want to carry on doing Constant well. And like, production. yeah, like yeah. I don't really look look at that. I just want to do well, and then at the end of my career, I can look back and hopefully I've achieved a few trophies or whatever, and and, and look back at that. So yeah, really good mentality. And do, yeah. just on those meetings that you have with Unai, a bit of detail without giving away tactical secrets. Are they like two hours long? Do the coaches get involved? Do the players get involved? Or is it more like everyone shut up and I talk and listen? And yeah, so like we'll have like, um, so if we play on a Saturday, we'll have a meeting the next Thursday. He normally like, if it will normally the Saturday and then we might have the Sunday off or whatever. Um, but we'll always do it like a meeting two days before the game. So if we play Saturday, it'll be the next Thursday that we have the meeting and it'll be an hour and a half, yeah, probably. Maybe a bit longer. Packed with so much detail. Yeah, just like him talking, like it will go over literally the whole game from... So if we play away, we watch the away game. If we play at home, we watch the home game. Um, So say, for example, we played Liverpool away on Saturday and then we were playing Palace at home. We wouldn't we wouldn't watch the Liverpool game. We'd watch the last home game we played. Do you know what I mean? Because I think he likes the feeling of of like the stadium and what the what the, the setting's going to be like. So it's like every every last bit of detail. Yeah, like every everything. Marginal game. Yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll obviously go in the meeting room and he'll just talk and he'll go through clips of what he wants to do in this position and he'll just go through the whole game basically what we need to improve at we beat Newcastle at home and it was like the performance was unreal wasn't it like we dominated the whole game and like we were like we were us lads were joking like oh there can't be loads to go through surely it was like perfect performance <laughs> really, yeah. we were in a meeting for an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> that just shows like that, the that detail was, yeah that was <laughs> yeah if you could put together a performance yeah like I think that was our most complete fans. performance absolutely over the season that Newcastle at home was at, like unbelievable and there was still loads to improve on so that just shows the detail and, and how good he is as a manager and, and how he improves people and looking to next season for yourself again you're only 25 there's a lot you can achieve at Villa as well this club hasn't won anything for 27 mm-hmm. years and counting now we're desperate for you to be part of that team yeah yeah no I want to be yeah obviously I want to be a part of it obviously every player here will say the same thing the ambition the club have got the way the club's going I think it's can go all the way you know so 
Um, as I said, we've got good manager, good staff. The fans are unbelievable. The support of the club is is up there with, with the best in the league. So um, there's no reason why we can't keep going and, and, and go to another level, yeah. And on that support, I think it's the two o'clock Sunday game against Everton in four weeks or so from now. Yeah. You must be relishing that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, every game is, is massive when you put on a Villa kit. It's, it's massive. But yeah, as I said, the new season coming up is going to be going to be good. Looking forward to the European games as well. Uh, big crowds at Villa, I'm sure. Under the lights, it'll be really good. So excited, yeah. Super. That'll do us for today, Matty. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you. And if you have enjoyed the video, please do leave a like rating and subscribe and keep your notifications on. We'll have much more content going over the pre-season heading into the new campaign. So stick with us and up at the villa.